You said this last episode that people like hold on to things, mm -hmm. right? There's going to be a little. So sometimes people say they want something, but are busy holding on to things that they don't want to let go out of fear. They don't want to let go of these things out of fear. They hold on to them because they fear letting go of, the, uh, of those things. And fear is the number one, one of the number one ways to control people, fear and money. So people are easily controlled by fear, even if the fear is themselves. They're fearing something themselves without somebody else putting the fear in front of them. So people can control, and this is the, again, the mindset of the average individual, people controlled by money and fear and other things. Um. You know, when you talk about poverty, right? Mm -hmm. And you talk about individuals who you say get your own, or they are people who are at a certain level and they see somebody who comes from that level and levels up, and they're looking at that person like, oh, they leveled up, but who they think they is, or now let me borrow something. Those individuals and people would say, well, why, why are you said like, oh, I could have did it. I could do that too. Some of the reasons that people won't do that too, won't level up too, is because some of the things that they're holding on to, and they would rather fight to hold on to these things than fight not to have it. I'm about to say some real shit that's probably not going to, that may make some people feel a certain way. That's why I'm taking my time. So in our culture and other cultures, not just our culture, people are often raised off assistance that they would never want to lose. Like government assistance, like brick cheese, food stamps, Section 8, and these things of that nature. And a person will purposely fight tooth and nail not to lose that shit. Come on, get out and get off your ass and go get some real shit for you. They will no motion. fight tooth and nail not to lose Section 8, mm -hmm. not to lose food stamps, not to lose government assistance. And the in the in the in the protocol for like that is that you can't have a certain amount of money. You can't have a certain lifestyle. You can't have a bank account. You can't have assets or you won't qualify for this. So individuals follow that because of the fear of if I get that, I lose this. So when I was at the age of 22, one of the other things that I told myself is I don't want section, man. Mm, I want it. I don't want section eight. I, I don't do. want food stamps. I, I don't do. want government assistance because I, because I my goal is for my lifestyle first and foremost to be walking in my purpose and be at a point somewhere where I don't need it like the individuals who live a life that don't need it. I right. would prefer to be in the mindset of an individual who does not need it rather than a person who does. If they come with some food stamps right now, I need all that. To each and, his and, own. And, and, and I split them with you. Oh, yeah. If you buy me some, if you now shit, now, 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 you go now, to the store, niggas, nigga. Now, now, now nigga want to start now, popping now, out now, on me. Now, 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 now if you hey, go to the store, and, store real quick, nigga. <laughs> if, you go, if you go to the grocery store and you'll be like, so, hey, can y'all gonna get shoot me $50? Pull, nigga, out, go. pull out that little green card, nigga. <laughs> e e eBay, shoot me 50 I'm going to spend 100 Here you go. Real Swiper, shit. no but, swiping. <laughs> hey, shoot me 50 I'm going to spend 100 But my point to that is at the age of 22, the vision I had for myself and my family was to the best of my ability. I didn't want to be stuck in a mindset because I grew up on Section 8. I grew up 
on these things. And I didn't, and me re-raising my inner child, that was part of it. And like you like to say all the time, that was part of it for me. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. for me and my family, by the grace of God, even though it's a struggle and it's been work, I've never been on Section 8. I've hallelujah. never, huh? I said, hallelujah. And the work that I had and still have to do is because, and this is, and the reason I'm saying this, so let me back up because I'm, I'm getting a little, you know, the reason I'm sharing this is because when you say, th these are things that affect individuals' mindsets, that mindset of, of the average individual, individual, and some people are, are even subpar to the mindset of, of, of that because of circumstances and fear. And so let me back up just a little bit. The reason I'm sharing this is because when you say uh, people have a tough time raising or re-raising their inner child or they're stuck not getting up and getting out and getting something, mm -hmm. it's because at the root of it, a lot of individuals would rather hold on to the things that are not meant to make them progress in life because it takes work to, to outdo that. So they're busy trying to hold on to the things that are meant to keep you right where you are. Right. And for me, that's not, that's not what I want. I want progression. I want growth. I want to walk right. in my purpose. What's the biggest thing that people hold on to out of fear? Other, other people. Relationships. Yeah. Okay. Other people, relationships. Yeah. We, we hang on to shit. We hang on to the relationships because we like, man, I've been here for so long. And out of like comfort, you know, like. And, and that's the biggest culprit. Yeah. We, I'm comfortable. I know how you're going to act. You know how I'm going to act. We're going to just do this. Familiarity. Even though we're at, a, we're at an unhappy place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's hang on to it. And, mm -hmm. and then when you decide, hey, at some point you got to say enough is enough. And, I, and Indeed. I'm glad. I'm glad that the way you you started positioning everything you were saying because you you kind of cake walked me into it because I had this road down. When is it too soon to move on mm. after you didn't been with somebody that you didn't been comfortable with? So let's say you've been unhappy for you've been with a person five years. Let's say for four years, three years you wasn't happy, and then you ought to say, "Hey, we ain't doing this no more," but out of the spite, out of the fact that I've been with you for five years, I'm not going to go date nobody else. Or I'm not going to go entertain nobody else for what X amount of time, a year, two years. Do I got to match the time frame? Five years. Do I go shit? As soon as I get out here and I find somebody to make me happy, is it okay to move on then? Like, what? When is it too soon to? move on for me i think um you move on at your own pace because once it's over you owe nobody nothing once we say hey we're not doing this no more it don't matter if it take me five minutes or five years or 50 years i'm gonna move at my own pace my motion mm -hmm. my motion because what are we doing is we setting we setting the standard for what you just said uh i'm we're not going to uh, water myself down. You're not going to water yourself down for other people. I don't got to do this because it's going to make you look good or make you feel better. Fuck you. You, yeah. you didn't care about how I felt. <laughs> I didn't care about you. know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So I think we always talk about healing. Yeah, That's one thing we stress. Healing. Make sure you heal. Make sure you're healing yourself. Here's another part of that a lot of times we want to make healing an elongated process. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we want to make healing an elongated process. Mm -hmm. Who's to say that you wasn't healing mm -hmm. in process? You can. Mm -hmm. You ever heard of doing time? So you can be doing time when you locked up inside in, in, incarcerated or you can be doing time on the outside. You can do time mm -hmm. in your mind. Mm -hmm. Who's to say and and you know they got it called uh, concurrent and consecutive. 
consecutive mm -hmm. means you do it right here, then you leave here and you do it. So a lot of times people mistake healing with it as a consecutive sentence. I just got out of this relationship and it was a bad relationship that I was in for five years. So I'm going to take a consecutive five years and, and heal mm -hmm. myself to get back right. So now I just did 10 years of mm -hmm. miserable, miserable, miserable ability, right? Miserability, mm -hmm. right? I've been mm -hmm. miserable for 10 years now because I never took the time because I, I overtook the time, right? Mm -hmm. I gave you too much time. Hey, listen, when you, when you first start realizing that you're unhappy, when you, when you first start realizing like, Hey, I don't know if this is going to work. This is where you start. This is your starting point. You don't have to wait to this person's out your, out your life or you're out this person's life. No, that's not where you start. You start that moment. You realize that something's not correct in you. When your body gets sick, when you catch the cold, you don't wait all the way until you damn near dead with the flu before you start taking medicine. As soon as you feel like, man, I don't feel good. Oh, <clears throat> my throat itching. You go get you some, some kind of form of medicine. If you think it's allergies, you hurry up and go get an allergy pill. And then you find out later that it was sinuses, but you already been taking the necessary steps to better yourself as quick as possible. Stop thinking that healing has to be an elongated process because you may miss your blessings trying to grieve over something else when you, you know what they do when you, when somebody dies you go to a funeral you got three days to grieve off of work they give you three days take them three days and, and, and get yourself crying now that that's not saying that the hurt it won't be there won't be a stain there but i'll give you three you go do what you gotta do and i'll give you three because after these three life still gotta go on so at what point do you say hey I'm not going to keep on waiting until this relationship is over or until I'm damn near dead or I'm damn near socked up or whatever that you want to say, right? I'm beat up now. I'm not going to wait for that before I start healing. I'm going to start healing the moment I recognize that my mental peace, that my my spiritual peace and my my uh, my overall peace is in jeopardy. That's when I'm going to start working to replenish myself, to hydrate myself to nurture myself back up. So stop waiting for it got to be, I, I've been in a bad relationship for 50 years and hey, guess what? That 50 gone. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, ain't get, you ain't getting it back, man. So you might as well, the quickest way to, uh, you were saying something about uh, our memories. Do you know mm -hmm. how we get rid of and, and, re, and raising our inner child. And so we go back and we look at all the memories, the good ones and the bad ones. But the best mm -hmm. way, the best thing for us to do moving forward is create new memories because the things that happen to us, that happen. We're going to live, we're going to learn, we're going to say, hey, I, I ain't letting that happen no more. I know mm -hmm. what to stop, but I'm going to go create some new ones. And I'm not going to wait all day because I can die tomorrow. I can die 10 days from now, 15 days from now, 50 years from now, it don't matter. But if I sit over here and be stressed out all the time, because this person or this situation or this whatever didn't no longer make me happy. The moment I recognized that I wasn't happy, that's when I went into protocol of healing. This is that journey now. Now you start working. Now when you get to this part, you might got to, uh, like when I had COVID, you know, when you when you first get COVID, when COVID first came out, you can't go out for two weeks. It, they say it was two weeks, but it was really whooping people for like three and four weeks and still long, lingering on. But one thing that the doctor said, you got to start going outside and start walking little steps. And then the quickest way to get over this shit, man, you, you you take your time that you need, but you start right when you recognize it. Don't wait until this shit is over and you sit in this shit. You start healing yourself while you're there. And so when you walk out of this shit, you say, man, I'm glad I got that shit up off of me. It may be a little, <clears throat> ah, but get that shit up off of you early, man. Don't wait. Go ahead, P. No, you're right. Um, a lot of what you're talking about would be a person being wise. A lot of what you're talking about would be a person practicing best practices. A lot of what you're talking about would be a person not being in the mindset of the average individual. Also, um, you know, this is what I mean when I say you do it alone. A person can be in a relationship. And they don't even necessarily, necessarily have to be in a relationship that they want to lead. Because nobody's perfect. So you'll find imperfections in an individual within a relationship and a person can find imperfections within themselves. But the best practice is doing it alone. This is what I mean by doing it alone. You could be in a whole family 
still working on yourself by yourself for yourself for the improvement of yourself and doing that in a, on a consistent basis without having to have anyone within your family or, or your significant other do that with you. So, um, yes, you can definitely, whether a person was looking to leave the relationship or stay in a relationship, a best practice would be to be working on yourself whenever you identify an area of weakness or an area that's worthy of being improved. And you don't have to be single to do that. You can be in a some type of relationship and improve yourself. In fact, you should. Um, you shouldn't, like you're saying, wait till you're single. 